By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to Winters Here, the Ice Age Constructed Tournament organized right here on Timmy Talks. We started with 46 players and now we have reached the finals. Only two remain. We've got Kundert who's playing Blue White Zurn's Spirit and he's taking on the Black and Red deck Leshrock's Conquest of Baron Nick. Oh man, this is going to be something. We've got the classical Blue White Control taking on a Black and Red Land Destruction deck. Now before I dive into these decks, I've got deck photos of both of these decks of course. And before I discuss all the ins and outs, I would just like to mention that as always, you can also choose to skip this introduction, skip the deck deck, just go straight to the finals. And the best way to do that is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, that will take you straight to the games. And in the description below, you will also find more information about the rule set and also about the cards that are restricted for this tournament because a specific set of cards was restricted. Uh, cards like Zurn Orb, Necropotence, Jester's Cap, Jester's Mask. So I chose not to ban them because I think they're epic cards, but I did choose to restrict them so that they wouldn't dominate the format. But of course, we do see some of these cards here in this grand finale. Okay, let's uh, just start with the deck deck. I think I'm going to start with the deck of Kundert, Blue and White, Zurin's Spirit. Here we go. And here we see the deck of Kundert. So this is blue and this is white. And it's kind of, I expected the blue and white deck to make it very, very far in this competition because Ice Age just gives you you know, the basic cards that makes blue and white so good at playing control, right? You've got counter spells, you've got disenchants, you've got swords to plowshares. But then the great thing is when you play Ice Age, you also have some really good card drawing cards. You've got the brainstorms, you've got the portent. Personally, I actually find portent better in an Ice Age only format. I understand it's a sorcery speed card. The reason I'm saying that is because portent also allows you to shuffle. There are not a lot of shuffle effects within Ice Age. And also when you look at this deck, there are no shuffle effects. Why is that so important? What Brainstorm does, right, is it allows you to draw three cards, which is huge. This is a great card, instant speed. But then you have to put two cards from the cards you've just drawn and the cards you already have in your hand. You have to put two cards of those back on top of the library. Now, this is not a huge problem. And usually it still means it's pretty good because you can kind of select the cards. and, For example, choose cards with a higher casting cost that you want to cast later in the game and put them back on top. But unfortunately, you know, there is no shuffle effect. This card would be even more insane if you would have some kind of shuffle effect. That way you can choose two cards from your hand that you don't need, basically put them back in your library and replace them with three cards that you do need, right? So I always like it when you can combine Brainstorm with a shuffle effect, but that is kind of more difficult when you're playing Ice Age only. So that's why Portent is a slight favorite of mine when we're talking about Ice Age only. In this case, though, we can see that Kundert is playing with both of them, and I think that's really going to help him dig through his library and kind of find the cards that he needs. Um, I just want to take a moment to discuss Kundert's creature base, because I'm a little bit surprised about his creature base. Um, the reason is this card. This is a card in red, Pyroclasm. Fortunately for Kundert, um, uh, his opponent, Baron Nick, is not playing this today. But Pyroclasm has been a huge pain for me in the Ice Age tournament. And it, it sees a lot of play. I've checked the deck list. A lot of people who play red, most of them actually play Pyroclasm. And rightfully so. It's just an insanely good card. One red and one and deals two damage to each creature. Now when we look at the creature base of Kundert, all of his creatures have toughness of two or less. So they all die to Pyroclasm. We've got Magus of the Unseen, which is a super cool card. It can steal artifacts. We've got, I guess, his his main threat on the board, the Wind Spirit. It's five mana, but actually in Ice Age, it's pretty good. I find this a really good find of Kundert playing with this card. So it's flying, and it cannot be blocked by only one creature. There are not that many flyers in Ice Age, so that second line cannot be blocked by only one creature. Actually, makes it really tough to deal with. But the problem here of Wind Spirit is, besides the high casting cost, but I guess that's not really a problem when you're playing Ice Age only, but the problem here is that toughness of two, so it also dies to Pyroclasm. Then he's also playing with Zurn Spellcaster. Zurn Spellcaster, of course, the Timmy of Ice Age. Super happy to see it here in the finals. 
um, again, it is one toughness, so it dies to Pyroclasm. So I've been kind of thinking, what does he do to protect these cards from Pyroclasm? I think one of the things is he can counter it, of course, but another thing he can do is he could play with this card, Chromatic Armor. Super cool art by Mark Poole. I mean, look at this card. One blue, one white, and one to cast for an Inchiant creature that reads, when Chromatic Armor comes into play, put a sly counter on it and choose a color. Any damage dealt to target creature by a source of that color is reduced to zero. Pay X, put a slight counter on chromatic armor and change the color that it protects against. X is equal to the number of slight counters on the armor. Now, what's really important is that um, this protection that chromatic armor gives isn't like a normal protection, right? If a creature, for example, has protection from red, it means it cannot be blocked by a red creature. That doesn't count for this. All it does is all the damage you get from a source of that color is reduced to zero. So for example, the spirit can still be blocked by a red creature. What simply happens is that the spirit doesn't take any damage. So that is like, that is quite unfortunate. I wish it would give like regular protection because then your creature would be unblockable as well for that specific color. Um, and also you couldn't cast like a source to plowshares on it if it would have protection from white but you can still source the creature because it only reduces the damage to zero. So there's like a, a different thing than a normal protection. Don't forget that when you consider playing with the chromatic armor, but of course chromatic armor works great against burn because burn is always damaged. So when it gets protection from red, the, the damage dealt by a pyroclasm, for example, is reduced to zero. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, just looking at this deck, it is very strong. It is a control match though. And I, I think this deck needs the mana. Um, although counter spells are not too expensive to cast, disenchants and swords are not expensive to cast. So yeah, this could be quite an interesting an interesting battle. And I think if he can find his brainstorm's importance and he can kind of go through the deck and select the right cards that he needs at that time in the match, this is definitely a contender to win this finals. So this is the deck of Kunert. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Baron Nick. And here we go again. We have Baron Nick's deck, right? We've seen this deck in the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and now in the finals. I mean, this deck has been performing so, so well. So let's just discuss it one last time. I really wonder if it's also going to win the finals. It made a very strong impression. Uh, it's black and red, right? And at the core is kind of land removal. So we've got ice quakes, we've got stone rains. And we also have this card, the Fumarole, which is quite interesting, right? One red, one black, and three. So it's pretty costly. Uh, but what it does, it's pretty strong sorcery. Pay three life to destroy target creature and target land. So it's a two for one. And like I said in earlier deck decks when I discussed this deck, is that yes, five mana is a lot. But when you combine it with the land destruction, the cheaper land destruction that he has, he's probably ahead with land. So when his opponent just has like two lands or three lands on the board... The, the chances are pretty big that Baron can already cast this Fumarole and, you know, take out another land and take out a smaller creature that maybe then the opponent has played. Um, talking about creatures, he also plays with a lot of creature removal. A card I haven't really discussed yet is this card, Fire Covenant. It's a really strong card. One red, one black, and one for an instant. So an instant, which makes it really, really much better than, for example, a Fireball. And Fire Covenant deals X damage divided any way you choose among any number of target creatures where X is equal to the amount of life that you pay. So what you can do with this card, unfortunately, you cannot use it against the opponent. Or actually, I think it's pretty good because it would be way unbalanced if you could also use this as direct damage on your opponent. But it is a great way to just wipe the board completely of your opponent, like all the creatures. I actually think the way this card is now, it's it's already a little bit too good, right? Because when you play a creature strategy, Fire Covenant is, is so going to punish you for it, right? This card, beautiful art by Dan Frazier, the beautiful dragon, uh, but it's just so, so strong. And in this match, we're also seeing a few restricted cards, right? Barry Nick is, of course, playing Necropotence that we saw in the semifinal. He is also playing with Jester's Cap and with Zurin's Orb. And his opponent, Kundert, is actually playing with Jester's Mask. So I'm really hoping to see a Jester's Mask activation in this duel. So Jester's Mask, another one of those iconic Ice Age cards, five to cast, comes into play tapped, pay one, tap and sacrifice the mask to look through target opponent's hand and library, give that player a new hand of as many cards as he or she had before, reshuffle the remaining cards afterwards. So it's just a great and a funny card and I remember when this card came out people were crazy about it and of course also crazy about the Jester's Cap 
Both players have Jester's Cap in this match, so I'm really hoping to see another activation of the Cap as well. I believe we saw an activation of Baron Nick in the quarterfinal of Jester's Cap, so that was kind of nice. So four to cast, two and tap and sacrifice, look through target player's library and remove any three cards from the game and then reshuffle the library afterwards so that could be really good i guess if i was baron nick i would probably just go for the counter spells just take all those counter spells out because they're super annoying um okay so this is the deck and yes i said that i know i play with counter spells but it's that's still an annoying card so this is uh the deck of baron nick we've looked at the deck of kundert so that means we're ready let's go to the grand finale who's gonna win the winter's here ice age constructed tournament will it be kundert or will it be baron nick well we're about to find out game number one here we go kundert on the play starting with an island and a pass turn so let's have a look what Baron is going to do on his turn one and just a land pass. He doesn't really have turn one plays with this deck. Kunert playing a second blue. There is Magus of the Unseen. So this is a card that can seal artifacts from Baron. Unfortunately for Kunert, there are just not a lot of artifacts to steal. I guess there's a Zurn Orb and there's a Jester's Cap. So it would be kind of cool if, if he can steal those. But that's about it. And there's going to be a pass turn, I assume. Maybe the players are just uh, tweaking a few things still. And there, Baronic drawing his card for turn. There is a second black, and there is a pump knight. So 2-1 protection from white, which is actually relevant, because it means you cannot play a swords to plowshares on it. But of course, he can block it with the magus. Then again, you can give the pump knight first strike for one black, and you can also pump it with plus one, plus oh for two mana. There is another Magus of the Unseen. I'm kind of expecting Kundert, yeah, to attack here. Why not? Worst case scenario, which is a good case for Kundert, he'll trade the Knight. But of course, Baron here takes the damage. Going to go down to 19, and now we're probably going to see some land removal from Baron. Remember, full playset of Ice Quakes, full playset of Stone Rains. What are we going to see? Ice Quake or Stone Rain? There we see an Ice Quake on one of the islands. So an island's gone, only one island remains. And look at that, it looks like Kunder actually missed his land drop last turn. Attacking now with two. So Baron gonna drop to 17. And I hope for Kunder that he has a counter spell in hand and he can possibly counter more land removal. Look at that, more land removal coming in. Another Ice Quake. No counter spell here by Kunder. An attack for two, he's gonna drop to 18. And things are looking bad for Kunt. He really needed a counter spell here. There's the attack because I'm kind of expecting Baron to perhaps play an Abyssal Spectre next turn and start attacking the hand of Kundert. There is even more land removal. Another Ice Quake and no lands left for Kundert. What a horrible game one here for our white and blue control player. All he has are those two Maguses that he can use to attack with, but that's it. Baron dropping to 13. And Kundert at the moment on 16 after taking some hits from the Knight. I'm expecting Baron here to simply just attack again, or does he want to keep it as a blocker? Or does he have some removal? Okay, he's going to attack for two. He's going to pump it up. So he's going to deal three damage. So Kundra's going to drop to 13. There we see a Lava Burst on one of the two creatures of Kundert. So only one Magus left. But what Kundert needs here are mana. He needs mana. He needs land quickly. Because Baron Nick is, is getting away with this game. Another one. Look at that. So he just draws Magus after Magus. That's not what you want against Baron Nick's deck. I mean, Magus of the Unseen is great when you play, for example, against a player that plays Icy Manipulators, but Baron Nick doesn't. There's the attack for two, and like I said, he only plays with two artifacts. Is he going to pump it again? And then he can put Kundert on 10 here. Looks like he has Kundert on 10. There we see a Soul Burn on the last creature of Kundert. Look at Kundert's board. It's not there. He's got nothing on the board. This is a very painful game one. Okay, he's finding at least one land. Remember, he cannot... Oh, Stone Rain, that's so painful. I wanted to say, remember, he cannot play Swords to Plowshares on the Knight because it's got protection from white. 
And I mean, I, I cannot see Kundert actually winning this. He's on 10 at the moment. There's another land. At least that's something. Tapping 5 here. There's a Conquer. Oh, man. He's going to take over the planes here. Wow. Wow. That's just horrible for Kundert here. No lands taking more damage. He's on 8 at the moment. There's nothing he can do, really. And this is the game that Baron Nick wants to play. Hitting him for three now, he's going to drop. It looks like he's already on four. What are we going to see? Oh, there's a Jester's Cap making matters even worse. If he can find one Swamp, though, he doesn't even need to use the Cap. Okay, he's going to use the Cap. So we're going to go through the deck of Kundert. I mean, it is nice to see a Cap activation, but this game one is just super one-sided. Uh, Kunert just couldn't find counter spells, couldn't find enough lands. Um, all he could find really was Megas of the Unseen. And now he's going through his library. And like I said, I'm kind of expecting him to just get the counter spells. Although, maybe now he wants to get the lands because he already uh, destroyed so many lands. He could just go for the lands. I don't think it's very relevant though because he's already winning the game. I mean, I, I understand. It's the finals, so you want to make the right decision. But, I mean, Kunert needs more than a miracle to still come back into this game. He's got, I believe, four life, looking at the life counter. And he's going to take a hit for three. He's going to go down to one. Perhaps Baron has a Lava Burst in hand as well. He knows that Kunert cannot counter because he's got no lands. He's got absolutely nothing. And, okay, there's an Incinerate. And I think he went for the Lance, by the way. Or did he go for those Brainstorms? Anyway, it doesn't matter. There's the Incinerate. So this was just a way, by the way, for Baron Nick to have a look at Kundert's deck, to have information for game number two, to kind of know, okay, this is what his deck is about. So it's quite clever for Baron to, to do that activation of the Jester's Cap just before he finishes Kundert off. So that's good play. Hopefully for Kundert, he'll have more luck in the second game. So both players are going to shuffle up and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Kundert on the play and let's hope he can find some of the cards that he so needs. There is a Depletion Land and uh, he's tapping it right now. So for one blue and the Depletion Land means when you tap it, in this case for white or for blue, you put a Depletion Counter on it and during your upkeep, you can take a Depletion Counter off and then it untaps again because as long as it has a depletion counter it doesn't untap and he used that blue mana to cast a brainstorm i i felt that's kind of what he missed in game one is the brainstorms and importance to kind of go through his deck that's a very important part of his strategy unfortunately for kundert here you know the i think it's called land cap that land by the way it doesn't untap so that means that he's got no counters on. But Baronic doesn't do anything usually in his first two turns anyway. And Kundert probably knows this. So he's playing a Brainstorm here at the end of um, Baronic's turn. So it's looking pretty good for Kundert. Already a lot better than it did in that first game. Where he couldn't find a single Brainstorm or Portent. Now let's also hope that he's got a counter spell up. Because what we can expect next turn from Baronic is to of course play Land Removal. And here he's playing Megas of the Unseen again. And that's quite interesting that he's using his land cap for that because that means it gets a depletion counter. Knowing Kundert, I'm pretty sure there's a reason behind it. And there is an ice quake. So perhaps he's doing it to saying to Baron, you know what? Don't target my land cap because it has that depletion counter on it. And there's that ice quake. And in response, we see another brainstorm by Kundert. So he's really going through his deck here. And I wonder what he's going for. So he's got, again, a little bit of pressure on board. He can at least attack for one. Let's see what he can find. Finds a second blue. So he's, he's got a lot of lands, probably because of those brainstorms. So that means that the land removal plan of Baron is just not as strong as it was in game number one. Let's see what Baron can do. With four mana, he can play an Abyssal Spectre. Tapping three. More land removal. Another Ice Quake. And again, no counter magic from Kundert. I am a little bit surprised because he is playing with four counter spells. Perhaps he's choosing not to because his hand is full of lands. That, of course, could be an option. Another attack here with the Magus. We see Baron drop to 18. It's, of course, just a 1-1. One, one. 
and there's another mountain are we going to see a fumarole that will be pretty devastating tapping for an abyssal specter now kundert really needs a counter spell to stop this abyssal specter no it's not coming perhaps he's got a binding grasp in hand or a swords and a darker waste stepping four there's an icy manipulator okay that is something but unfortunately for kundert he doesn't have enough mana to use it that means that abyssal specter is going to attack remember it flies it's going to deal two damage but more importantly kundert's going to lose a card here so it's going to drop to 18. he's going to lose a card at least he can choose with the abyssal specter and he's dropping the Jester's Mask. Ooh, I would have loved to see that in action, but I do understand that he discards it at this point in the game. There's another Swamp for Baron Nick. Again, I feel like Baron has the upper hand here. There's another Ice Quake. And he just keeps targeting those islands. And there he goes to untap again, take off that Depletion counter. So at least Kundert... I'm playing a portent here. At least Kundert has enough mana to activate his IC to tap down the Abyssal Spectre next turn. Hopefully this portent will get him what he needs. The nice thing about the portent is you can look at the top three cards, put them in any order, and then during the next player's upkeep you can draw a card. Uh, but you can also choose to shuffle your library. That's also an option. So he chooses not to. So I guess that's a sign that there are some good cards there. Attacking for one here. Baron dropping to 17. Kundert needs to win this to stay in the finals here. And I think if you're Baron, you're like, it's going pretty good. So here, tapping down the Abyssal Spectre. Only three lands for Kundert. And a pass turn. Okay, this is good news for Kundert. There is a little opening here. There is another land. He is finding enough lands, probably because of the portents and brainstorms that he's been casting. Attacking here for one. I mean, a Binding Grass would be so good right now. Baron Nick has nothing against enchantments. So Binding Grasp is basically a two for one. It's a really good card against uh, Baron Nick's deck. There's another Ice Quake. And look at the graveyard of Baron Nick. A full play set of Ice Quakes. And of course, Kundert using the mana from the Ardarkar Wastes to tap down the Abyssal Spectre. There is another Magus. He's finding all these Maguses, but they're not really key cards in this matchup. Like, there's so many decks that play with a full play set of Ices, and then the Magus is just fantastic. But in this, in this matchup, it's just not going to do much. At least it's an attacker, I guess. Still, Kundert has two blue up. I just hope for him that he has a Counterspell in hand, because Baron Nick's deck is just so dangerous. Tapping down the Spectre... Are we going to see more land removal? Oh, the, the, the Fire Covenant that I talked about in the deck deck. And it's going to kill both of the creatures and deal two damage to Baron Nick. Very good card. I guess it's not too bad for Kundert. He's only losing two creatures that... I mean, they were putting some pressure on the board. But it's not it's not his win con. Like, he's he's hoping to, to draw one of his, uh, his spirits. Tapping down the Abyssal Spectre here. But of course, Spirit is 5 mana though. So he needs a lot more mana. And again, we didn't see a counter spell, by the way. So I think Kundert's quite unlucky in that department. Not finding any counter magic here. They could have protected him from those creature removal spells from Baron Nick. And Kundert here just passing turn. This is bad. Remember, the more mana Baron has, the bigger those Lava Bursts will be. And we already saw him win several games on Soul Burn and Lava Burst in these kind of standstill scenarios. I feel that the direct damage is really, really good in this format because in Ice Age, there are just a lot of control battles and, you know, these, these Lava Bursts and Soul Burns can kind of get you through it. So here we see another Icy Manipulator using both of his Depletion Lands. Very interesting, this strategy. Tapping down the Abyssal Spectre again. So, I mean, this could be a very long game. Those ICs, I mean, they can hold the fort. Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual. Are we going to see a huge soul burn here? I think we are. Six, seven, eight, nine. A soul burn for nine? Yes, soul burn for nine. Oh, this is devastating. We saw Baron do this in other matches. And, I mean, this is going to grant him the victory. Because look at the life total of Kundert. He's now on eight. That means one more Lava Burst. And the party is over. 
Oh, man. I am so hoping for Gundert to have a counterspell to just untap, keep counterspell in hand, and kind of fight back. Is this going to be one of those finals where we end up with a, a straight victory for one of the two players, a 2-0 victory? There's a pass turn, depletion counters taking out of the lands, off of the lands. And, I mean, can Kunder do anything? You want to keep your mana up to counter, I assume, exactly. So he's just passing turn here. So that Abyssal Spectre will be tapped by an Icy. That way he still has mana open to counter. Passing turn. Ah, oh, this is so rough for Kundert. Finding a Plains, okay. So he's got enough lands. The problem here, of course, is if he taps out to cast something... You know, the risk is he'll get killed by a Leva Burst or something else. Tapping 5. So he is taking the risk, playing his Spirit. So a 3-2 Flyer. I mean, I guess he's got he's to take the risk, put some pressure on the board. But this is also an opening for Baron. I wonder if Baron is going to cast a Burn spell here. If he is, it's over and he's won this tournament. With his Black and Red Land Destruction deck. There's the tap down. There it is, Lava Burst. That's it. Baronic winning this one 2 0. And I kind of feel bad for Kundert here. We haven't seen a single counterspell from his deck. I feel like he, he can do more, but this is a great victory for Baron. Congratulations, Baron, on winning the Ice Age tournament. Winter's here. You are our Ice Age maestro. Okay, so this was the finals, the last match, the last video report of the Ice Age Constructed Tournament Winters here. And of course, a big congratulations to Barry Nick for being our Ice Age Maestro of 2021-2022. And as you can see, this beautiful altered Jester's Cap Timmy by Matt Strott is coming your way. You've deserved it. We saw you win in the top eight, in the semifinals, and now in the finals as well. I do feel a little bit here for Kunert because I know that his deck can work really, really well, and in both of these games, it did not. It can do a lot better, but that is what actually happens a lot in finals. I've got a playlist full of finals, um, and a lot of some games are real thrillers, but a lot are kind of clean sweeps. The thing is, if you're playing against another really good deck and you've got a couple of hiccups, then usually that other deck takes over completely, right? So in an ideal final, you want to see both players drawing the best cards and then you have usually have the best battle. Didn't happen, but still, you know, it is what it is and a very earned victory for Barry Nick if you look at how his deck performed all over the tournament it's great and i think black and red is probably one of the strongest color combinations in ice age and i think blue and white will probably come after that although red and green is also a very strong color combination as a matter of fact what color combination in ice age do you think is the best and why let me know in the comments below and talking about that stuff if you want to help the channel there are three things you can do and they're completely free that is liking this video leaving a comment and sharing it on your socials and if you're new to the channel you can also consider becoming a subscriber so hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so thank you very much for doing all that and helping Timmy Talks move forward. Now, what you can also do if you enjoy these tournaments and would like to join them in the future, you could consider becoming a patron of the show. As a patron, you're a sponsor. You're helping me keeping Timmy Talks open, keeping it alive and making content for you. And how does that all work? Well, there's an info card popping up right now. Click on that info card that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And when you're on that page, you can find out on what tier you want to support the channel. It already starts with $1 a month. And the cool thing is, if you join, you can join all these tournaments because I organize tournaments to thank my channel members and patrons. I do that almost every other month, every three months or so, um, just as a thank you for their support. So if you want to join that, uh, please join the Timmy Talks Patreon program. And there's another really cool perk. Your name will also be mentioned in the end scroll including the end scroll that's coming up right now. So let's take a look at our fantastic Wunderbar channel members and patrons. Let's go to the end scroll.
Just think it's a samba kazee. 